Today I'm playing my first ever MA1 tournament and this is a three round event on three different days. So we're just here for day one at River Park in Benton Harbor, Michigan, preparing with a little bit of food and trying to get mentally ready for the day. Here's what happened. We got about an hour until the tournament starts for me. So I think I'm gonna start getting ready to go. I bought new shoes that I'm wearing for the first time. My pinky toe just ripped right through. So I got these new trail shoes, but I'm hoping to not get any blisters. I tee off at 145. Eventually I'm hoping to have people that I can pay to fill my rounds, but you see the subscribership on the channel right now. It's not an LM. I'm gonna go over the game plan and the course with you now, and then just get some warm up putting and throwing in, and then it'll be tournament time. I'm honestly gonna try to get some putting in, not to like practice making putts, practicing was before the tournament. Today it's really just trying to get a good feel, like it's popping well, I don't have to worry about that. And then same thing with throwing a disc forehand and backhand, tiny, tiny bit sore in my bicep. This tournament is the Third Coast Championship, so I'm playing here today, then about 20 minutes south tomorrow, and then about 40 minutes north for my final round at a really beautiful looking course, Lake Arvesta. I'm pretty nervous for my first MO1 tournament. My nerves are starting to kick in now. I've been excited and I definitely am still excited. I'm just really hoping that I can compete at the level that I know I can. For some reason, when it comes to PDGA rated rounds, I have something weird go through my head that's like, this is different disc golf. And so I'm excited to try to play through that added pressure that I put on myself and just get a good round in today. Game plan today is honestly get a lot of birdies because these two courses today and tomorrow are much easier looking than the last day and the weather looks better, so. If I can go out there and shoot a pretty hot round, I'd feel pretty good because it'll probably be less birdies that I'll need to get on the hardest course, but I'm still gonna try to play really well at all of them, so. All right, pretty happy. Made a big putt at the end. That always feels real good. Made a couple steppers. Honestly, I made more circle two putts than I missed circle one putts. So I'll take that today. Let's get to an actual nice camera to chat. Honestly, pretty proud of how I played. I'm trying not to focus on the negative things that I did. You know where this advice is from, let me know, but it's to, not dwell on the things that you did poorly, but to think about the three or four things that you did very well. And today, I threw my mids pretty well. My circle two putting was pretty solid. Yeah, I missed it putting overall. I missed a couple chances, but overall my putting was good. One more thing, my mental game was pretty strong because I didn't start out hottest after seven holes, but let's get into my round and we'll go quickly hole by hole to see how everything went. But first, even though I was keeping score, I have not yet checked my round rating. I still have everything from the page where I submitted my scorecards. It's not gonna be my actual rating. We'll honestly probably be able to tell you that by the end of this video. But as of right now, we're going to PDGA Live for the event. And me and one other guy that was on my card are tied first with 981 rated rounds. As of right now, let's go. That's solid. We shot seven down and I knew this was a course that I needed to get birdies at. But it looks like we're either gonna be top or top two, which is pretty solid. And we were definitely pushing each other, which is really fun. Eric, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Let's go through this hole by hole to talk about the interesting things and the footage that I was able to get shot today, because it's pretty fun. All right, starting off hole one, just watch this. And walking up, I was literally parked. I think I was probably about two feet from acing the first hole. And this is surprising because honestly, a lot of the distances that were on PDJ and the tournament were so off. Someone apparently range finded them, but I don't know if they missed or something because the first hole said it was 388, where it was only 315. So having a range finder today really, really helped. It felt super solid to get the birdie there because honestly, all I'm trying to do is go through three holes and feel confident about my game. Hole two comes along, it's the one that says 440. It's actually just over 400 feet. I left myself with my first circle two look of the day about 45 feet out, missed the putt low and left, wasn't feeling super confident. And so stepped up to hole number three, through a drive that really wasn't the best. It kissed off a tree, left me with about 50 feet, and then this happened. Not to be outdone, Eric, who I was playing with, also does this. Good pot. So we both made long circle two bids to start out birdie, par, birdie, which is a really solid start. Unfortunately, hole four comes around. It's only about 210 feet, but it's low ceiling, dog leg to the right. And so I threw my justice, my first forehand of the day, because I knew there wasn't a lot of skip on the ground, but I wanted to at least let a mid range float a little bit more. And I hit the first available tree, pitch up a zone, miss a 30 foot putt just inside the circle, take a bogey, which really stunk. And then I went par par through five and six, nothing super interesting. So on to hole seven, I, my throws weren't feeling phenomenal. I ended up taking out my trusty Thunderbird on a big hyzer line, because there was a little OB on this hole, but I threw it nice and high, and this happened. Trying to just keep my mental game up, know that there's more opportunities, just play my game. 
it's just hard to can to not compare my score with the other people that i'm playing with luckily i just parked this hole so that's pretty solid hole eight i step up really narrow gap maybe only about 30 feet 200 feet ahead of you up the hill so i took mid-range and this was really my first test of putting i left myself 25 feet and i was just really trying to tell myself hey i'm a good putter i know i can make these putts and so i step up confident just go through my routine make sure my wrist is cocked back as i go down and I made the putt. So that is two birdies in a row. Hole nine, relatively simple downhill hole. All three of us on our car did not throw well. So I took a par there and then went birdie birdie on the next two holes, which felt really good. One of them was kind of ace run hole, which you'll see here. Honestly, if I would have thrown that a little bit right, I might have a one on my scorecard today. And then the next hole, another beautiful pure shot. When I say pure, I mean the disc. So I was having those stretches of birdies. I don't think I got a single turkey though. That's unfortunate. Hole 12, I just threw it a little low. It was an uphill 185 foot hole. Moving to the left, perfect shot for my zone, but I was a little bit worried because there was a slightly low ceiling. So I threw it really low, left myself with a 45 footer, still uphill, missed that putt, tapped in for the three, and then hole 13, I'm still a little disappointed on. I left myself 25 feet, 250 foot wide open hole with OB maybe five feet past the basket. So tough to want to get close to the basket. I was feeling a little more confident at this point, but I also knew that there was a wind, like right now, pushing from the right to the left. So just missed my second inside the circle putt, which sucks. This was 25 feet. First one was 32 feet. This one I missed chained out right side. I thought it was gonna fall in. I thought the wind was gonna push it in. I threw it right side and am right, but it didn't happen. Brutal. When the putt's coming out well, I didn't even really think about this, but when it's coming out well, it's coming out very flat, meaning the wind might affect it a little bit, but not nearly as much as someone with a hyzer putt. Because if you hyzer like this, now the wind can affect the flight plate down here and really push it to the left. And then we move on to hole 14, which also backs up maybe about 10 feet behind the basket is OB. And you're throwing flat for about 150 feet and then it goes down into a ravine. So I threw a shot that wasn't great and kept me with about a 30 foot look right around there. I might've just been outside the circle backing up to OB, but I told myself, hey, I'm a good putter, I can run this. And I ran it and ended up just making it kissing over the cage. So that was a really confidence inducing putt to go from having missed a 32 footer, just missed a 25 footer to making 33 feet downhill with OB behind felt really good. I'm feeling like if I aim for a spot in the basket, I can hit it. And that's a lot of confidence moving into tomorrow. Hole 15 was about 410 feet. Was trying to record my drive, but didn't end up recording. It was one where you could finally like open up. There's OB to the right, but I wasn't worried about that. I'm throwing rives. There are 13, five, that's a Thunderbird. They're 13, five, zero, three but I threw it a little low because I was worried about my footing. And so since I threw it low, it went a little flatter, meaning it turned a lot more than I thought it would. And it just barely grazed to not go OB. So I just pitched up an easy zone shot to take my three, very grateful about that. I was pin high, but way to the right. And then 16 was sad. Hole 16 is a really good hole right here because you go along the river and then the basket is pretty much guarded by OB. There's a road, there's low hanging branches that don't let you crash an easy forehand hyzer in there. And so I was like, I'm gonna take my Thunderbird, try to just play the safe shot, throw it into the ravine, throw it a little bit short. And so I threw this Thunderbird, which is my slightly less stable Thunderbird, and I threw it flat instead of throwing it on hyzer like a silly person. So it landed right in the middle of the road, pin high. So if I had thrown this on hyzer or maybe thrown like a grace or arrive on some hyzer, I think I could have parked that or at least gotten closer, but we're not gonna try to dwell on that. Ended up taking a bogey, was able to pitch up and really clean that up. That makes me feel really good, taking those easy bogeys. Where I'm not leaving myself long putts for the three or the four, I'm able to just put it close to the basket if I know I'm not running it for a two, that makes me feel confident. Two forehands, two bogeys. One of them, because I missed the putt, and this one, because I threw it just don't be long into this road, but. It's all good. Hole 16, two more to go. Hole 30, I'll be happy. Luckily, 17 and 18, I was able to do pretty well on. Hole 17, you'll see here. Just a big wide hyzer with my Emac Truth, which honestly today I realized because I threw this poorly on one hole, my old Lucid Emac Truth is not nearly as stable as this Lucid X Glimmer Emac Truth that I just picked up. So I'm so glad I bought this because this disc does not do what I want it to do right now. It has a really beautiful flight. I just had to realize that the hard way today, but I left myself with 30 feet. Eric was kind of laughing at me because I was 30 feet flat, but, but there's a big drop off behind the hole and he had 20 feet uphill. He's like, man, I'd so much rather have 20 feet uphill than 30 feet with the drop off. And so I had to make it in his face. And then he made his in my face. So we both took twos there. That felt really good. Making another 30 foot putt. That's really confidence inducing going into tomorrow. And then hole 18, I really, had to start to trust my evaders because it was about 340 feet to the hole through a tight gap ends up hitting the gap it doesn't flip as much as i would want it to i still need to throw this into more trees so i left myself with the 45 foot and i told myself i was going to record the first and last shot of the tournament so you already saw the first shot here's the last
I'm honestly feeling pretty good going into tomorrow. I'm gonna get some food. It was a very short round, which is nice. All right, just finishing up the edit here. And as I had recorded that, I was just finished, so there were still some cards out, so my final round rating wasn't up yet, but it is now. And if you look here, both Anthony and Eric tied first, three strokes out of the next person with 992 rated rounds, which is tied for my best round ever. So I'm really happy to be playing in MA1. If you wanna see why I chose to start playing in MA1, check out this video right here, even though I've only been playing for seven months. Trying to mentally reset for tomorrow and just try to shoot the hot round again, acting like the whole thing has started over and this is the very beginning. See you guys tomorrow. Please subscribe if you like the content and wanna see more of this and like the video, because I think that really helps on YouTube. Thanks, peace.